Greetings, beloveds. This is Amy Karen Johnson, the Earth Channel. Today, I am going to continue with the third part in our series on channels and compromises in human design. So if this is your first video that you're seeing this on, please, I would encourage you to go and get a free chart. This is related to astrology. You can get a chart at many free human design chart creators. Uh, the one I often recommend is humandesignamerica.com slash chart. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to do that and come back when you're done. And the chart I want to share with you first today is the chart of the eclipse that is coming up next week. And it's one of those channels that I would like to focus on. So to back up for a second and review what a compromise is in the context about which I'm speaking, a compromise is when you have a channel and the channels are the lines. A lot of times there are always going to be some that are completely white. And usually, not always, there will be at least one that is completely colored in either with red or black. When you have one that is completely colored in from end to end, in red or black or both, then that is a defined channel. And if you're in a relationship with someone or something, talk about that more in a moment, and that other person or thing has only one of those gates in that same channel defined, colored in just halfway, that's a compromise. And it's sort of like the person or thing with the full channel is compromising, not with, but compromising the other person's sort of search, I guess is maybe the best word, for that energy at the other end of that channel. When you only have one of those gates defined in a channel, you have this sort of desire or urge to complete it sometimes, to have what you don't have. How often do we all want that? And so when we enter into any kind of relationship where someone else already has consistent access to that full energy at that other end as well, it can kind of feel like they're stepping on our toes in some ways. And that doesn't have to be the case. There is a way to rise above that, transcend it, as I have been talking about. And so I'd like to talk about how, for some of us, the eclipse and our relationship with it may be compromising our own ability in certain channels. If you look at the chart I, I showed, and I'll show it again now, there are actually four different channels defined in the eclipse chart for next week. This is the lunar eclipse that will occur on May 26th, 2021. So there are four channels, but I want to focus on just one because we don't want this video to go on and on. I'll cover the other ones at another time. And for me, this is the one channel that is compromising a gate in my own chart. So I'll share that with you as well. It is the 3740 channel. I only have the 37th gate defined in my chart. This channel connects the will center, which is the small triangle and in the eclipse chart, since a full channel being defined means that both centers on one on either end of that channel will also be defined. The small red triangle in that chart is the will center, and the brown triangle that it connects to on the right is the emotional center. So if you want to look and see if someone else might have this channel, or especially someone else you're in relationship with, or how similar their chart might be to this eclipse chart, feel free to pause again and, and run their chart as well if you'd like. If you don't know your birth time, try noon. We can always have a conversation about that and see which birth time resonates with you. Ideally, you hopefully will have your birth time. 
So this 3740 channel is about agreements, first and foremost. Agreements in relationship. It's what human design calls a tribal channel. I prefer other words like a family channel or, you know, the three different types of channels are, according to human design, tribal, individual, and collective. So I don't want to use the word collective because that denotes a different type of channel. But family is probably the best one I can come up with right now to replace tribal. I know that that, that is offensive to some, some people. So that's why I prefer not to use it. But in the context of a family, whether it's a chosen family or a birth family, then this channel can bring with it, number one, especially if you have the whole channel defined, a sense that you are highly capable and have consistent access to resources. And other people will appreciate that, but they also might be jealous of it at times. If you only have one of those gates defined, like for example, I only have the 37th gate defined, and I do not have the will center defined, but I do have the emotional center defined by a different channel. The 37th gate theme by itself is just one of sort of the black sheep of the family, the one that doesn't fully fit in, a little bit of a maverick, one who marches to the beat of her own drum. And so in healthy families, of course, this person will be accepted for all their quirks and eccentricities. In unhealthy families, they may end up being somewhat of a scapegoat at times, unfortunately. But with at least the will center being open for me, it makes me not appear to other members of my family unless we define it together so that, that can that can occur and that can be the case. But it's strongest when one person has that center defined. And if no one has it defined or you don't have it defined, I don't have it defined, colored in, that means it will be white in my chart or your chart if it is open. It it other people don't perceive us as having consistent access to those resources. Having that sense of power, you could almost say uh, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. But I will still be seen as a maverick. So on the other hand, if you happen to have a defined will center and you have an open emotional center, that makes you more empathic you will still be seen as having access to those resources consistently and that power, that je ne sais quoi. But you will tend to want to avoid conflict just because that open emotional center makes you sensitive and you feel all everyone else's emotions more acutely. And you can amplify them so that others feel them more acutely as well. If you have both of these centers open, then you're going to amplify that energy from anyone else who does have them defined, such as a person who has this channel completely defined, colored in. And that can feel like a real zing. Uh, for me, even just being around someone with a defined will center, the, the red triangle. You know, in my younger years, I really wanted to impress those people. I felt at times like I was scrambling to prove myself to them, to show what I was worth. Now that I'm more mature and I have come to understand and accept and appreciate my worth outside of that particular center being defined, because that is absolutely the case, even though it may not seem that way to the world sometimes or at first to other people. Other people will eventually recognize your value if you do, but you have to do it first. So 
now that I'm more mature and I, I recognize my own value, there are still some people who don't necessarily recognize my value, at least at first. And when I am around other people who do have that will center defined, then I still feel that zing, but it's more like they have a strong sense of will, having that center defined. I can have a strong sense of will at times, but mine is more flexible. And when I we come up against an issue of any kind that we disagree upon, and it's an issue that I feel strongly enough about that I do have a strong will about that particular thing, it can feel like we just need to walk away from that particular topic and not discuss it sometimes if the other person feels strongly as well. Because they still have consistent access to a, a certain amount of power, I will say. And that doesn't make them bad people. It makes them very valuable. It's hopefully they're being careful about where they apply that power, that it's really necessary and for the highest good of all concerned and not just their whim, for example. There are plenty of people who use that power well, but it doesn't work a lot of times to argue with them. They will usually be the ones who win. And so really, if that's something that you feel very strongly about, you might have to walk away if you, you can't come to any kind of agreement getting back to that theme. By the same token, if you have even one of these gates defined, not the whole channel, other people can still project upon you that you have agreed, even when you haven't, to supply them with certain feelings, certain resources, um, especially if you have that 40th gate. With the 37th gate defined, like I have, it's, it's more that access to those emotions and hopefully stable emotions, especially if that person does not have their emotional center defined and they are sensitive, they can still desire to feel those feelings, but they only want the good feelings pretty much. So those of us who do have a defined emotional center to supply those good feelings, but we don't sustain them, that we always have a little bit at least of an emotional wave. And so it's healthy to embrace sadness, grief, even some anger. Sometimes if we, if our boundaries are crossed, it's healthy to feel some anger, take responsibility for it, handle it in whatever way you need to. Don't lash out at other people, but still feel it, name it, talk about it. Even if it's just talking to yourself, if that's the only way that you can safely do that at that moment. So those other folks may feel that you have agreed, <laughs> may assume that you have agreed, may project upon you that you have agreed to always feel positive, good emotions all the time and just supply them with that happy, wonderful feeling all the time. And so what I'm getting at here is that all of us, any of us who have even one of these gates defined, the 30, 37, 40, or both, are bound to disappoint people at one, one time or another because no one can consistently forever always provide good feelings. No one can consistently and forever provide access to all resources that anyone could want. And... In the example I'd like to share with you today, I feel like this eclipse is highlighting my relationship actually with Facebook. I have been enjoying for the last almost four years a really awesome free access to putting out my vlog and my blog to lots of people. It has helped me, helped my reach multiply a hundred times more than any other platform I have tried using so far. And just recently, they have really drastically changed their policies and no longer allow me to share even a tenth 
as much as I was before in terms of my blog and my block. So, however, if you do the math, I was more or less roughly speaking the truth there in terms of numbers. It's still 10 times more than any other platform I have used. Not 100 times, but 10 times is still a lot, even though it feels like a lot less. However, it was a lot of work still, even though it was free and it was nice for a long time, I had been thinking for quite some time that I needed to rethink how I was doing this, pull back on Facebook, focus more on YouTube, focus more on my website, and I have. But now Facebook changing this agreement that I thought we had is forcing me basically to pull back even more and I still think that that was needed. I realize now that it was needed. I was angry at first. I don't agree with the reasons that they are doing it. It feels like censorship in a lot of ways. But this is their deal. This is their gig. And they have the right to change it for any reasons they would like. And that's the case with anyone you might have a relationship with. Friend, enemy, thing, eclipse, <laughs> whatever this might be highlighting for you. You know, they obviously have the right to choose not only to to change agreements, but choose to see the agreement as something completely different from maybe what you understood it to be. And so when you're trying to overcome this compromise, it's always going to be more difficult for the person who has only the one gate. It's always good to take a step back, take some time, take a deep breath, a few deep breaths, many, <laughs> as we will in a moment when we connect with Gaia. And you can access that energy. Your birth chart is not set in stone always and forever, just like agreements are not set in stone always and forever. For example, in my progressed chart, which is one thing I've been experimenting with, I do have a defined will center, and I feel like that's not quite as natural for me to express that energy and that power that comes with that as it is with my birth chart, but I feel like I can access it. And there are a lot of different ways you can access these different energies, including from Gaia, which we will in a moment. So the way that you do that from just my perspective uh, before we check in with Gaia is by getting back in touch with what you value about yourself. What do you love about yourself? What are you most proud of in your life? And what do you feel really moved to share with the world? Then, whatever that is, just really sit with it, really absorb it, and let it fill you up. And then once you've given yourself that love and appreciation, it'll be a lot easier for you to see the path forward with this other entity of whatever kind it might be and appreciate them for what they are, what they offer, their perspective, and see how you can still come together as needed, or how you might need to, to part ways in whatever degree. It doesn't have to be black and white. Like with Facebook, I am going to continue being on Facebook and appreciating it for the value that it still has for me. And honestly, I'm also appreciating it now for what it has forced me to let go of, because it would have been hard for me otherwise to fully let go of that. I've had so many, so much success so many new followers and members in my group through Facebook over the years. It, it was really nice to get that recognition. And actually, I wasn't really paying for it, except one brief time when I ran an ad. Now I may run an ad somewhere else, but I'm still appreciating and I still have the momentum of that success that I have had there. And so I'm not going to abandon it. 
So I hope that helps you if you are feeling compromised by a full channel, especially that one. And feel free to write in the comments what you would like me to cover next, which channel. Do you have another channel that someone else has fully defined and in your interactions with them is proving challenging? I'd be happy to cover that one next. And if you haven't noticed already, I do have a little bit of a different take on human design than you're going to hear most other places. So I hope you'll understand that I have basically rearranged my agreement with human design as well. And, you know, that challenge, that knowledge was channeled into the world through Ra Uruhu. And he had a very, a certain way of, of, speaking about it and teaching about it for many years. And the human design chart, I think, identifies our filters in many ways, and I think that's a very valuable thing as well. I agree with many of the things that he has shared in the past. However, I think that there is more knowledge to be channeled into the world through all of us, and it can benefit others coming through different filters other than just his. And so I think that we are all only limited in our evolution by any one person's unwillingness to evolve and shift with the times and with different perspectives, all of which are valuable. All right, that should do it for now. Let me check in with Gaia and I invite you to join me. Take a few deep breaths and close your eyes if you'd like. So I'd like to make sure this time that we really get a nice deep connection with Gaia. Not that we haven't before, but there have been some distractions in the past. So I'd like you to, if, you, if you'd like to join me, visualize the sun coming down through your crown as if you were a tree. And your aura does project out from your body at least five feet. So. Imagine your crown of leaves up there. Imagine the sun coming down into your leaves, into your crown. Down through your third eye, your throat, your heart. Your solar plexus, your sacral, your root down your legs and out the bottom of your feet into the earth, at least down five feet that way. And then beyond into the core of Mother Earth, Gaia. And once you really feel that, visualize that energy coming back up into your roots up through your feet, legs, root chakra, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and up through your crown. And then just feel that energy circulating throughout your body. And send some love out into the world from your heart.
when we connect to both the sun, Solaris, and to Mother Earth, Gaia, in this way, we can access any energy we need. You can get it from other places as well. You can get it straight from source. We are a part of source. We are a small fractal of source. Your higher selves are another way to access those energies, any energies you need. When it's your higher self, Solaris, Gaia, Source, it does help to ensure that your intentions are pure and for the highest good of all concerned. It really helps to open you up and really get that energy flowing. When we have such benevolent intentions, it stops us, keeps us from holding on to anything which restricts the flow of that energy. And so when we let it flow, that's when we can access even more. And with the eclipse, not just because of that one channel, not just because of any of the channels of that eclipse chart that might be compromising anyone else and their chart, but with the full moon eclipse, lunar eclipse, there are always endings. This one occurs in Scorpio, according to the sidereal zodiac. And we had the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio last December, I think it was, November or December. And so this is the ending of that particular cycle. And anything we are having trouble releasing, as occurred in my earlier example, might be taken from us. And we might have a challenge, a hard time with that at first. But just take a moment to look back and see whether maybe it fits in with your overall intentions after all. Is there a blessing there? We are often conditioned to believe that we should just accumulate and grow constantly, always build up, build up, and expand, and that's true. However, things need to be released as well, <coughs> such as from our throat chakras. Excuse me. In order for things to evolve, we must shed our skin. Shuck our sheaths, our shells, as if we were a seed in order to be able to sprout. There is a time for growth, and there is a time for letting go, releasing. And sometimes those times are the same times. Whenever one door closes, another one will open. By releasing energy and focus spent in one place, we will have more energy and focus to place on something even better. And it's not to say that we can't say goodbye with gratitude 
or appreciation for those things that we are releasing or people that we might be releasing, at least to some degree. They served their purpose. They were wonderful in their time, in that way. And now it's time for something else to take shape. There's no need for guilt. It's okay to have a little sadness. It's okay to have a little anger. Grief, absolutely. Only when we can fully appreciate the beauty and the gift in what we have had in the past can we truly bring that forward into our present and future? And sometimes it takes an ending to highlight what it was that we liked about it or them. And if you do have to part ways with a person or multiple persons, You can also decide to live out those parts of them that you appreciated so much. In yourself, it's okay. It's okay to emulate another person. You don't have to be a complete copycat. But you can bring forward those beautiful things. And... When you share them with your voice, they will take on another identity anyway. When you try to completely copy someone else, oftentimes people will recognize that something is missing. But when you tell things from your perspective, you will add that wonderful, unique essence of yourself that people were hoping for in the first place. And that's how we expand. We perpetuate those wonderful things that are still serving us. And we add on and we release what no longer serves us. And maybe someday it'll come back around again in a new version and we will find new appreciate, appreciation for it at that time. Deep breath. Let it go. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste, beloveds. Thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, and clicking the bell button to be notified when the new weekly message comes out.